we, we invest a lot of time into uh, our clientele. So it has to be something that we believe that we can scale, you know, to at, at least a half a million dollars a month or it's, wow. it's, it's, it's not what we get involved in. Welcome to Seven Figure Entrepreneur Podcast, the number one podcast for bringing you behind the scenes with real online earners. No fake gurus here. And today we have Aaron Parkinson. Uh, Aaron got handed over to us by uh, Tyler. Tyler, um, can you go into how you sort of met him a little bit here? Because I, I have like I have no clue what Aaron does. I'm no background. Here. Zero, zero. I'm just zero. the guy. I'm just the guy doing the intros to like. I didn't even out. know that that this was the seven figure podcast. I make like sixty bucks a year, so oh, I get. That, you know what? That's perfect. I make seventy five, so we're on the same page. <laughs> this should be this should be interesting. How you frame this, Tyler? Yeah, I'm now and I'm thinking where to start. Uh, so first things first, the way we got introduced, I forget how we got introduced. Like I think there was initial, but the way we reconnected again was through Caleb Jennings. That's right. And then I happened to be in Grand Cayman. Aaron also happened to be in Grand Cayman where he lives. And so we decided to meet up. We had a couple of drinks at the Ritz, talked about what each other were doing. Next thing we know, I'm looking at homes in Grand Cayman, but that's a whole other story. But uh, essentially what Aaron does, he's a Facebook agency. So he manages a lot of different brands. Uh, what's the smallest brand you have do monthly revenue? Oh, like a hundred a month. In, in spend, right? Um, yeah, it like they're, 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 that's a small client for us. Our typical client comes to us and they're already spending, you know, 2,500 to $3,000 a day and they want to scale up to five, six, 10, 50, you know, nice. just depends on what their goals are. Yeah. And then what, what would you say your biggest client is spending on day on, on average? Uh, about 50 K. So wow. as you can see, he has a broad spectrum of <laughs> spending anywhere from 2,500 to 50 K. Uh, across different, uh, it, like probably different verticals, right? Because I know yeah, you do a lot of we, we, we kind of find like our, our two, we, we have some weird outliers, you know, like we've got a university, we've got a cybersecurity company, you know, those are sort of outliers for us. But, you know, our, our two verticals that seem to be, you know, where we get sent the most customers are through info marketers or e-commerce. Mm -hmm. right? we're, we're, we're divided pretty evenly, which is, you know, your info guys are like your, your books, your coaching, your, your high ticket, you know, whatever. And then your e-commerce guys can be anything from, you know, organic supplements to, you know, bracelets that keep mosquitoes away. Like yeah. it's, it's such a weird variety of things, but mm -hmm. we don't do any, no drop shippers, no, you know, no short term stuff. You know, we, yeah. we, we invest a lot of time into uh, our clientele. So it has to be something that we believe that we can scale, you know, to at, at least a half a million dollars a month or it's, wow. it, it's, it's, it's not what we get involved in. So, so as you guys can see, Aaron just simply has a broad spectrum of yeah. knowledge and ideas. And I actually want to touch on that. Um, probably not quite yet, but what you look at before you know something's going to work. But um, before we get to that point, now that people have a good understanding of what you do, do you want to talk about a little bit how you got there? Because I know you've done a whole list of other shit in the past. I know you even had a drop, uh, drop, sh uh, drop shipping store yourself. Um, so let's rewind, talk about how you got into the game and to the sure. point where you're at now. Yeah, I actually, um, I, I, I spent, so really far back, I was trying to make the national team for soccer in Canada. And I got all the way to the National Development Center and I was a goalkeeper. And I'm, I was, I, back then I was almost six feet. Now I'm like 5'10". And, uh, and, and, and professional goalkeepers are like 6'5". And so they said to me, are you going to grow anymore? And I said, no, probably not, but I'm really good. And they said, yeah, so is he and he's 6'5". And that was the end of, uh, that was the end of the soccer career for me. Dreams were dashed. That dreams were dashed. So then I was, I was stubborn. So I was like, yeah, you know what? I'm going to do something else in sports. So then I enrolled in mixed martial arts because I had done martial arts since I was five and just took a very powerful right leg from kicking 8 million soccer balls and just turned it into something that would hit people in the rib cage or the head and, yeah. and made, you know, made a run at the UFC for four years. And then they took my weight division out for a four-year time span. So dreams got dashed again. And I was like, oh my God, what am I going to do? So me and my wife moved to the Cayman Islands. We started serving tables and bartending. We thought, you know, like if we're going to have menial jobs, it might be somewhere, it might as well be somewhere that you make money and there's sunshine and sand. And that was, you know, almost 20 years ago. And, uh, 
you know, we did that for a few years, saved up enough money to buy a house, you know, which was pretty good for a couple of bartender, you know, buttheads like us. And uh, we went back to Canada, bought a house, started a family. And, and you know, not even a month after my daughter was born, I, I looked at my life and, and the landscape. I was selling cars during the day. I was running security for a nightclub at night. I was making no money. And I was like, there's no way that I'm living the next 30 years of my life raising this kid in this environment. Like, it's just not, mm. not happening. So um, I ended up diving into the digital world. I actually got my start originally in the network marketing world, uh, as you do when you have no skills and no path and no judgment. Yeah. And, uh, and, you know, they were still doing like flyers and newspapers and stuff. And this was pre-Google. And, and I went online and said, hey, man, I wonder if I could generate some leads online for this. And, and within one year, I was number two in that, that company that I was with, um, wow. doing like, making like 50K a month. And for me, that was, that was like I won 10 lotteries because I went from making like nothing to a lot, you know, for me at that time in a, in a really fast amount of time. And then, of course, you have teams in network marketing and they're like, hey, you know, can you show us what you're doing? So then I was building like all their landing pages and autoresponders and you know, copywriting and everything for them. And, and I got so exhausted by it. I said, I got to systemize this thing. So I systemized it and I launched it to my team. And it was like the first ever recruiting platform online for network marketing. And then, and then I quickly realized I don't have to be stuck with my team. I'm going to, I'm going to give it to all the companies and they can all use it. Right. Yeah. Like, why not? Why? And all of a sudden I was no longer a network marketer. I was a, a SaaS platform owner teaching digital marketing when there really was nobody in the space. Like at that point, it was like me, Kern, Reese, you know, like Andy Jenkins, like old school guy. There was like nobody yeah. training it at that point. Right. And so I did that for three years. We had, uh, you know, over a hundred thousand students in 80 countries. Wow. Uh, I stole, I sold that to my partner three years later. Um, then I wanted to go back to the health and fitness space. So I started a program called Automatic Body, which was a 24-week weight loss and fitness program. And I grabbed Kim Lyons, who was the trainer from the Biggest Loser TV show from the first three seasons. And we slapped her on the front of the brand. We built a phone app that actually released one module uh, a week over 24 weeks to help you make your changes subtly. Because I really oh. wanted to like I wanted to challenge and disrupt a, a stupid industry that teaches people they can lose 20 pounds in 20 minutes and yeah. all that nonsense. I'm like, how about we actually try to help people like permanently? So our, our slogan was one, one small change because it was one small change a week. And this app would release what you needed to do, but then it would remind you through the day at the times you were supposed to do the thing. Like yeah. if you needed to drink a glass of water seven times a day, you'd get a, a notification, drink a glass of water. And then you'd have to approve it or decline it to hold you accountable to show you your actual consistency in following the program. We that's were way cool. ahead of our time. Like we clearly like stuff that that's was, amazing. That, that's cool. you know, stuff that's like happens now and it's normal, like the, my fitness pals and all that stuff. Like we were way ahead of our time. And then we built a supplement line, like a shake and a weight loss shot and an energy drink to go with the program. And we had 600,000 users within three wow. years. Wow. Um, and my big goal was to exit out to, to Weight Watchers, you know, or a big company like that, but we just couldn't make it happen. And, and ultimately the original investors ended up taking it back over. And at that, you know, juncture, I was like, I don't really know what I want to do next. Like I'd been in my own thing for, you know, seven years, like grinding. And, uh, and one of my, one of my old affiliates um, had this e-com store and I could see this like trend of drop shipping, you know, and, and I literally set up a store in like 12 hours and tested it and I didn't make any sales. I was like, this is bullshit. I'm not doing it. Right? <laughs> like, this is dumb. And, uh, and then my buddy, I saw him post on, on Facebook that he was doing like three grand a day, um, in, in e-commerce. And I hit him up and I'm like, bro, like, what are you doing? And it wasn't three grand a day. It was 300 bucks a day. Yeah. And um, he's like, hey, I, you know, I'm doing this drop shipping thing. I found this product. I think it's a winner. I'm going to scale it. And I said to him, look, like, let's partner up because if there's anything I know how to do, it's scale. And we'll like, we'll, we'll, we'll partner on this thing together. It was a brand called Grace Cali Designs. And uh, within 18 months, we were at 9 million a year in sales. Wow. Nice. And all hands free, all like 
it's drop shipping straight from China into a, a Shopify store, built out a customer service team, did all the stuff I know how to do from ads and retargeting and email lists and blah, blah, you know, Amazon and blah, 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 blah. And, um, and it was funny because at each million a year, we would start asking people like, hey, who knows somebody who drop ships at 2 million a year? Yeah. At 3 million a year, 4 million a year. And like when we got to like 5 million a year, people were like, what the fuck are you talking about? Like there's no, there are no coaches for like five, six, seven, ten, you know, yeah. Like they don't exist, right? Like people are trying to make like 10 grand a month, not, not yeah, a month. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Right. And, and, and I could start to see the algorithms change in Facebook and Instagram. And, and, and we knew it was a cash flow business, not a, not a brand business. So we knew what we had. It wasn't, you know, something that, that we were delusional about. Yeah. But in 2018, right before Black Friday, Cyber Monday, we were cruising along. We were selling, like 65,000 a day um, wow. of this stuff. We're making 15 grand a day profit. And, and I was like, just send it, send it for three more months. And I'm just going to go buy something like stupid on a beach and call it a day. Yeah. And, uh, and then boom, our traffic went down by 90%. Wow. And, and we got this notification. Oh, your customer feedback score is low. We're like customer feedback score. What the hell is that? And, and we were one of the first stores they tested their new feature on where your customers got surveyed about what they purchased in their newsfeed. Yeah. And, and like our score was terrible, like ship time, terrible products, you know, quality average customer service, good. But the overall score brought us below a two, which is where they oh, give you an ad penalty. Gotcha. And, and it was literally like two weeks before black Friday, cyber Monday, Ooh. like I would like we were just straight vertical on our stuff. And all yeah. of a sudden we, we were like selling four grand a day. And I'm sure there's a lot of people out there that are like, I'd like to sell four grand a day. Yeah. Not when you're selling 65. Yeah. Right? yeah. And, and on top of that, but I, I, my tin foil hat theory is not only do they penalize the amount of traffic they get, they give you the worst traffic yeah, because the conversion, the conversions were all screwed up even on that amount of traffic. Yeah. And so, you know, then we, of course, what do you do then? You go, okay, well, the game's changed. Let's import a bunch of product in. And we got a fulfillment center that we started ourselves in Arizona and we brought all the product in. And then now you're playing the game of preloading inventory yeah. and all of that heavy money stuff. And yeah. I was like, you know what? I don't want to do this anymore. Yeah. Like, this isn't even a real brand. It's nothing special about it. We haven't created anything unique. Like, I went to my partner, said, you want to buy it? He's like, I'll buy it. Done. I'm out. Yeah. And, and from that point forward, you know, that was, that was at the end of 2000 and uh, like basically like the first month of 2019, anytime I see somebody teaching like China based drop shipping, I'm like, you evil bastard. Like you, <laughs> this is all horseshit because yeah. I've been there. I've done it. Right. And you know, U S based drop shipping that can still work. It's, it's tougher because of the margins, but mm -hmm. You know, China-based dropshipping is a real, real tough game. So yeah. um, at that point, I started, um, I had started my agency and that was kind of like my fun thing. Like that was my side hustle because it was just a cash flow yeah. business. And I'd been running the agency for like two years. And I just started it through word of mouth. I had so many friends that were like, hey man, can you help me with my stuff? I've seen what you've done. I started as a one-man show you know, and, and you can run an agency pretty effectively as a one man show up to about 60,000 a month in billables. Mm. And, and once you get to about 60,000 a month in billables, like stuff starts to fall through the cracks pretty quick. So, yeah. you know, then I had to start expanding. I had to get up like an operations person. Cause I was forgetting to invoice person, you know, people. And she dealt with all my calendar and my money and and then I had to bring in a media buyer and then another media buyer and then some creative people as we continued to scale. And, and ultimately I got to the point where um, Jason Hornung, who is widely, you know, uh, you know, widely renowned as the best Facebook marketer on in, in America today. I mean, he's, he's launched Sam Ovens and Neil Patel mm -hmm. and Frank Kern and traffic and funnels and yeah. the list goes on and on and on. Mike Dillard, um, he, he basically called me up and and said hey you know 
do you want, do you want to do some work together? And we did. And a month later he goes, I don't want to be a CEO of an agency anymore. Like I hate it. I <laughs> yeah. hate this industry. Clients are terrible. Expectations are completely out of whack. Like how about I focus on messaging and copywriting and you become the CEO and we merge together. Yeah. And, and he had such a great team to go with my team that to me, it was just a no brainer. So we merged them together. I became the CEO and the primary shareholder and, and we, you know, we've doubled every year since. Wow. So, um, you know, I, 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 I definitely think that a lot of it has to do with the quality of people that we have. We have mm -hmm. really talented people. We're really big on building culture and, and talking to our team about like what they want to accomplish in their life and creating that stickiness, you know, because that's, that's the other challenging part about running an agency is you, you teach people how to get really good at what they do. And then they go, well, why would I want to work for you? Yeah. I just yeah, yeah. go pick up some clients. Right. Yeah. And, and, and we, we really do our best to make sure they're well compensated. They're always learning. We're always listening to what they want to accomplish out of life. And they've got, you know, a trajectory that they can, that they can, um, ascend to and and feel good about staying so you know knock on wood we haven't lost any of our key team members ever mm -hmm. uh which is allows for that stability and that you know yeah uh, consistency of results right so yeah i mean that's that's everything you know jammed into 10 minutes uh, skipping over all of the stupidest things i've done you know which we could, <laughs> we could, we could definitely dive into those too <laughs> No doubt. And we'll probably get into them. Yeah. So I love stupid things. Yeah. Yeah. So now we've got a kind of good background where you came from. Um, let's talk about like, kind of like what you see going on, like Facebook today. Um, you know, when you and I chatted uh, in, and came in there, you know, I was talking about, we saw, you know, Facebook bans in some places, <laughs> other places we didn't so much. Um, and I know you're in some pretty, like some pretty interesting verticals where other people do get banned. Uh, yeah. Uh, we have a, a, we have some very interesting clients and, and I'll take a step backward and answer the question first. Um, I believe my theory is that Facebook's tech team and, and their AI is actually, has actually gone 10 steps beyond where it needs to go. And I think they have an extremely um, intelligent, you know, army of people working for them that are constantly trying to impress. Mm -hmm. And yeah. And because they're growing so fast, they're trying to put all these systems and processes in place to make sure that the user experience is at the highest level so they can maintain stock price. And I actually think in the last year, they've actually, um, they've grown too fast in that side of their business because we see more um, accidental um, bans yeah. than ever um, this year. And, and we have to go through the process, you know, with our reps and whoever else of like, explaining the situation. Um, I had a, a prime example yesterday. I mean, one of our clients is the only accredited university in America for blockchain developers, right? Yeah. Well, we know you can't market crypto on Facebook. Yeah. We're all aware of that. They don't market crypto. They are a school that trains developers. Yeah. Well, the first two months, I couldn't get anything approved. And I'm like, I had to like, say to them, like, look, at, it's a school that has an accreditation that takes seven years to get an accreditation. It has nothing to do with crypto. Yeah. And we got it approved. Wow. Now some of our yeah. ads this week got disapproved because we're talking about the job opportunities for blockchain developers and cybersecurity experts. And, the, and they're coming back saying, well, you're a job recruiting website. And <laughs> like, we're not a job recruiting. We are a university talking about yeah. the, the size of the opportunity for people if they graduate and that was another four days of yeah. ads disapproved. So their bots and their AI are like hair triggering so many things so quickly. And, and if you don't have like direct access to them to explain the situation, you won't get much of an answer. And then you just think, oh, I'm screwed, right? Like, yeah, yeah totally. I'm out, I'm out. Like, yeah, it's crazy. You know, even two weeks ago, two of our media buyers had a warning come up that said, you are permanently banned from advertising for life. I got that. And they were like, ah, you bad yeah. that? I still have it on my personal account, man. But like, I, I run heavy. Like, I find other ways to do it. But like, 
yeah, I can't get it back. And it's like, you've hit your max. You can't hit, you can't even talk to a rep, nothing. They don't care. It's just like no, a lock. And I, it's and, locked. And I'm not talking about profile bans from the system. I'm just talking about advertising, like yeah. ban, ban from advertising on your profile. Yeah, I'm not allowed and, to use any of the tools. Yeah, and, and so these two guys work for me. And so of course my first question to them is, what are you, are you running something on the side that you shouldn't be running, yeah. right? And they're like, no dude, like we're not running anything. You know, we don't have any outside clients. Okay, and check that box. And, and we went back to, to, you know, audit the situation. And the only variable that we could, we could figure out between these two people that was the same is they had actually created in the past, like years ago, secondary profiles under their name like actual you know personal profile oh. right and so yeah. we went back to them and and said hey like these guys work for us we did identity verification we did all of these things and um and it was good after that mm -hmm. can you guys hear me okay yeah 100 percent, definitely did you lose us oh i think you did it'll come back it always does Dude, it's actually getting chilly up here now. Your nose looks red, like you're oh. cold. You can go inside. <laughs> in case anyone's wondering, I'm actually just in Vail right now. And I figured outside would be a little bit better than inside, but that might have been a mistake. Oh, he's back. You're back. I'm back. Yeah. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, yeah. I can hear you fine. All right. I don't, I don't know what happened or what is happening, but I got cut out for a little bit. Yeah. Now your face is frozen, but it'll come back eventually. So it doesn't really matter. There you are. You're back. Unfroze see, face. All right. Let's see if it kicks into gear. Seems we seem like we're a little unstable. Yeah. <laughs> it happens all the time, man. It's so hard to like manage like three people's connections <laughs> with this totally. stuff. It's just it's how she goes. Yeah, and we'll just see how it goes. Well, hopefully we'll we'll stay in the in the power vein moving forward. But anyway, yeah. my my point is is that those two profiles we went back to Facebook. We said they haven't done anything wrong. You know, what's the problem? We deleted the extra profiles and then boom, everything came back up. But we have to do our own research and, and file our own case and try to figure it out because yeah. they're not, they're not, they don't have the bandwidth to like explain to you what your problem is. Yeah. So, you know, every client that we bring on now, you know, the very first thing we do is we audit everything they're doing, their tech stack, you know, are they using VPNs or they like their history, their merchant yeah. accounts, you know, all of it, because we don't want to waste the time to get them ramped up and then have the whole thing collapse on us. Man, that's, cool. that's, that definitely adds a level of uh, work to it. That's crazy. Um, yeah, man. But even with you have, a, even when you have a rep, like you, you still have to go through that whole process and, and stress about it. Absolutely. Inter yeah. Interesting. They, they because so much of it is controlled by AI now, you know, in addition to how much it is controlled by manual and manual review, yeah. that, you know, 70% of the time now we go in and we, we, we talk to them and we, um, we argue against, you know, ads being disapproved or ad accounts being disapproved or even business managers being disapproved. And they'll come back to us and say, oh, that was a mistake, you know? Oh, yeah. and, and meanwhile, the the person that's running it is having a heart attack, you know, of, yeah, because they just lost so much money and it's just a mistake. Yeah, dude, I, I feel you. Like, I can, and I'm sure everyone who runs Facebook can 100% relate to that because we've all seen it. Like, even on the lead gen stuff I run, it's, it's constantly a battle. And it's, and I would argue that it's fairly safe. It's just that it's affiliate style stuff and they just hate affiliates. So, yeah, I, I think, you know, I've, I've run a lot of different affiliates in the past mm -hmm. and, you know, what people have to remember with Facebook and Instagram is they don't care about us at no. all. No. Right. They, they've got money. They're good. Yeah. yeah. Right? yeah. And, and, and the only, the way, the only way they know that they're going to be able to maintain their quality and their position up top is user experience. Yeah. Right. So, so they value the user experience way more than they value our money. They're playing the long game. Yeah. So, 
you just have to look at it and ask yourself, like, is this really something that somebody wants to see, buy, engage in, you know, long term? Because if you don't, you're on a short runway, right? Yeah, for sure. Totally. I agree with that. I 100% agree with that. Interesting, man. Uh, as far as, so I know a lot of people, they always say, if I only had a Facebook rep, but if I only had a Facebook rep, I wouldn't have these problems. But clearly, from what you're saying, that's not the case at all. Like, even with the rep, there's still kind of challenges you run into. Yeah, and, and not to mention, there's, you know, people who are always like, hey, when do I get a Facebook rep? Well, you can get a Facebook rep at a pretty limited spend. Like, if you're spending 10 grand a month, you'll get a rep. Yeah. But their reps are like level one through 10. Yeah. Right. So that first rep you get is just as they're, they're like, they're like the guy who just got hired last week. I mean, <laughs> yeah. he doesn't even, he doesn't even understand the, his own platform yet. Yeah. And, and they mm -hmm. certainly never run an ad. Yeah. Right. So I, I remember when I got my first rep, I was so excited. I was like, I'm in, I'm on the inside. I'm going to yeah. learn all the tricks. It's going to be yeah. amazing. Didn't and then I got I on him and he's like, maybe. There. He's like, maybe you should try this and this and this. And I was like, what are you talking about? Like, I, of course I've already tried that and it's terrible. Oh, you know, man, like, that's so funny. it makes no sense. Yeah. You know, and, and it, you, you don't really get the, the good reps. Yeah. And until you're, you know, an approved partner agency and you're spending at least a million dollars a month. Yeah. You know, that's, that's when you start to get the reps that can actually do something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've heard there's different tiers of reps. So like if you're like a big person like Coca-Cola or something, you're getting a way higher level rep than someone who's just spending 100K a month. Um, yeah, that's cool, man. And I'm sure that they have more access to things also. Yeah, I mean, they'll make your ads for you. Oh, crazy. You know? Oh, yeah, they'll make your ads for before. you. They'll send you creatives. Yeah. Um, they'll, they'll, send you, they'll send you reports on like, your competitors like you know <laughs> that's how amazing. much they're selling what their where their placements are their best practices like they'll they'll give wow. you like crazy amounts of stuff once you get to that level yeah um that people have no idea right yeah. like you can show up to the office and chat with people and Dude, like that's... once you get to that level but but they also like like to be a partner agency, for example, you have to jump through all these hoops. Yeah. And, and an example of a weird hoop is like you have to do a certain amount of marketing across auto placement. Yeah. Right. So they're like, hey, even though you might be converting better, you know, in desktop or, or in, in newsfeed or in, you know, Instagram story or whatever if you don't market on auto placement to a certain percentage, we're not going to allow you to become a partner agency because they want to make sure that, that all of their inventory is being used up and they want to make sure that, that you're doing what they want to get the yeah. special treatment that you want from That's that. interesting, man. Do you know what I, I feel about auto placement? I almost feel that you get rewarded with better traffic, even if you're hitting those same placements that convert very well. So like what I mean by that is like, I find I can make way more money on auto, but I'll still be hitting like mobile mostly, right? Cause that's where the majority of the traffic is. Um, yeah. But when I try to like segment it out, I find that that it almost like Facebook's like, ah, oh, this is, you're, tr you're trying to be too precise with this. We don't like it, fuck off. Like go back to the way it was. And I'm also noticing that with dynamic ads too. Um, I've been pushing that really hard, but I was like a strong believer in like, you know what? I'm just gonna like best headline, best image, best call to action, all this stuff. It's gonna work better in theory, right? No, nah, it's the other way. Just like mm -hmm. let it go and let Facebook do its shit, and it's ten times better for me. Wow. Can you guys hear me? Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. Perfect. Yeah. We, like our rep told us last, uh, probably about a month ago, that across their platform, Dynamic Creative converts on the desired result forty percent higher. Yeah. Wow. That's so crazy. So they, you know, a lot of people have this like tinfoil hat theory that Facebook wants you to waste money in places that they, you know, that they want to make money. Yeah. And they, they don't. That's Google. 
You ever get on a you ever get on a on a phone call with a Google rep? You, they'll waste your money faster than you can you know shake a stick. That shit does but, budget too. Oh, oh, does it ever? Hard and hard and and Facebook, like legitimately, if you look at like their their documentation on how to run your ads, if you do everything the way that they teach you in the like basics of how to yeah. do it, you'll succeed. Yeah, you know it. It, it takes some skill to scale up to really high levels. Mm -hmm. But if you follow their basics, like I can't tell you how many clients don't modify their placements, like they're creative for their placements, for example. Like they'll do one video yeah. with, with some text and then they'll just shove it in the system and it's not tailored for stories. It's not yeah. tailored for Instagram. It's not tailored for even the copies like they'll be like hey click the link below and it's like dude it's an instagram how the hell are they going to click the link yeah. right like it needs to be like yeah. you know click the bio to learn mm -hmm. more like and they give you those options they're like hey well you know here's all the options you know you can even split test in and like they give you all that stuff but most people don't use it and and they're either uneducated or lazy yeah so that's interesting so like do you have to because the creatives are different sizing, do you have to break out uh, the dynamic ads if you're running dynamic per placement? Is that how it works? So or can you edit it within that one just for the placement? You can edit it from within the one. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, that it, it, it will get to the point, I believe in the next five years where Facebook's algorithm will be so advanced yeah. that we will legitimately be at that place where you're like open audience, 20 to 70 United States go yeah. Yeah. and it'll just zone right in and there'll be no more, you know, oh. agencies for it because the algorithm will just be so advanced. And then you, that's, yeah. I mean so, like, yeah. and then the, your skill set is just being a good copywriter and being creative absolutely, like images or video and stuff. Absolutely. and you know, to, to, to sort of circle back around on the AI standpoint, like we had a client come in the other day and he's like, Hey, I'm going to set up this new profile and this new business manager and I'm going to do VPNs. And I'm going to root it through here. And I'm, I'm like, really? I said, so you, you clearly don't understand the scope of books AI. I said, yeah. do you have a, do you have a video camera on your computer? Yeah. And he's like, yeah. I said, you ever logged into your business manager from your computer? Yes. I said, and you don't think that Facebook has scanned your face <laughs> like through your camera? You don't think so? Yeah. I said, I said, cause I've seen the APIs on the back end of those types of infrastructures and they scan everything, your phone, your, ca your camera, your desktop, your IPs, wow. your everything. And you think you're coming in and like, you know, I'm going to start a new profile under Sam Benson. <laughs> And I'm going to do this and, do that. and then you log into your Facebook business manager. It's like, whoop, it's down. And they're like, how the hell did, dude, they're yeah. looking through your camera. They have your, they have facial recognition for this shit. They this never, point. they never admit it. I mean, it, and I'm not saying they're bad because of it. I'm yeah. saying they're advanced, right? Yeah, yeah. So if you want to win, you either go super, super white hat and do everything the way that they want it. Or you go super black hat and have 72 credit cards and 42 business managers in 72 countries and you just yeah. hammer it and make cash, which I know a lot of people do. And that's, you know, yeah. that to, like to each his own, we don't play in that world because we have to deal with them at a corporate level. Right. So yeah. we just do everything exactly the way they want it. And, and we don't have any drama. We scale up, we stay up, we keep growing. Yeah. It's easy. That's, um, that's crazy, man. Something I want to touch on is, is scaling here. And, and I'm only speaking for my own selfish reasons because so what I'm finding here is that I find that like, it's no matter how much I spend, I stay at the same profit margin and I'm finding it very challenging to get, um, like, so for example, regardless if I spend hundred K a day or 50 K a day, I'll still make the same amount. Okay. Um, do you have any suggestions on how to really how like what's the best steps and protocol to scale something and how what's like the timeline it takes to get uh get to that sort of next level and i know that's a very vague um estimate but i just want to hear about your scaling practices yeah there's there's a 
a lot of layers to that, but yeah. to try and like make it as simple as possible. Where I think a lot of people um, are, are, are a little bit less educated on scale is that what you have to understand is at a certain level, your product has seen the majority of the people that want to see it. Yeah. Right. So it doesn't matter if you spend more money, if you're just showing the same people, the same thing over gotcha. and over again, there is, a, there is a cap, right? Yeah. And, and depending on the size of the, the audience and the avatar that you're dealing with, it's all going to be different. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So first things first, you have to really understand how big your audience actually is. Like mm -hmm. if you're just targeting realtors, right. There's only a million of them. Yeah. Right. So you can't spend $10,000 a day on that audience because it's, it's going to be saturated. Mm -hmm. Right. When you have a wider audience, then what you have to realize is that ad creative fatigues way faster, the larger you scale. Yeah. So, you know, for us, like standard operating procedure for us is we'll, we'll allocate 25% of our budget into retargeting and we don't get off of that until we've got like six ROAS. Like, I don't oh, care. I see so many clients and they're like, yeah, we tried retargeting. It didn't work. Mm -hmm. and, and I'll say to them, yeah, yeah, retargeting works every time when you get it right. Yeah. So you know, we're dedicating 25% of our budget into retargeting because mm -hmm. that's the closest to source. That's, that's the customer. We already got the customer. Yeah. Right. So we want to have it in there. And then like 60% of our budget will go to LLAs of every range, right? Purchase, add to cart, gotcha. initiate checkout, page view, engagement, you know, 50% mm -hmm. video view watches, like is, is, as many things as we can do, we're running one to 10 Smart. LLA and CBO campaigns because that's the second closest to source, mm -hmm. right? And then 10% of our stuff will be like interest-based because yeah. that's the furthest from source, but at least it loops back in because those become warm, which become LLAs. And, and that's where we do the majority of our testing. Gotcha. And, and we, we only increase our budget by about five to 10% a day because we don't want to blow out the algorithm. And I think that's another challenge a lot of people have is yeah. as soon as they've got something converting, they're like, I want to, I want to hammer it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that just throws off the, the algorithm big time and they get too impatient. So, you know, if a client comes to us and says, Hey, we're spending 1500 a day, how long does it take to get to 5,000 a day? You know, we're like, yeah, it'll be two, three months. Yeah. You know, and they don't like that answer. Yeah. You know, they're like, no, I want to, I want to go now, yeah. you know? And it's like, no, it doesn't work that way. So, you know, we're, we're five to 10% a day on our budget increases and that yeah. holds our ROAS, yeah. right? The other thing is, is that at scale, you know, we're, we, we use what's called a three by three by three permutation where we test three new um, videos or images and three new angles or, or hooks and three new audiences using dynamic, so we're 27 different creative permutations per week inside of a 10% slot in our budget Yeah. to get ahead of when we fatigue the yeah. winner, that's, right? That's smart. Um, so you guys are, are more so adding money to your either your CBO or your ad set, I'm assuming CBO because you mentioned it, um, over a timeline. We've been doing CBO for 14 months. Interesting, interesting. Man, that's so interesting because I, I do it the complete opposite because I, I test both, obviously. And ad set con like converts 10 times better for me every time. Um, interesting. Yeah, and it, and, it, and it did for us too Yeah, in the beginning, right? Because yeah. we, we know it, we understand it, it's easier. Yeah. But it's going to be, it's going to be eliminated. So, yeah. you know, we wanted to learn it and get ahead of it a year before it became a problem. Interesting. Can you share kind of what you learned with CBO a little bit? Yeah. I, I mean, CBO, you almost treat CBO like an ad set, you know, is, is yeah. kind of how we treat it. So, you know, if we're going to launch something new and test it, we, other than the LLA stacks of one through 10, yeah. Um, what we'll only test the maximum of six ad sets per CBO. Yeah. Because otherwise, it's too much to. Yeah. Too much to 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 be moving around. 
And, um, you know, we'll test dynamic creative inside of each one of those ads gotcha. to allow it to go. The, the downside with CBO compared to ad set level is that, you know, when you're scaling at an ad set level, you can look at it really quick and you can scale it or shut it off. Yeah. It's a, it's a really easy game. Yeah. Right. When you start using dynamic creative and CBO, your one day, that's what we used to give ad sets one day becomes five days. Interesting. And, and if you're too quick to pull the trigger on it, you can kill a lot of winning stuff way ahead of time, yeah. like way too early. I've heard it's and more so of a long you got to have a, yeah, you got to have a deeper budget yeah. to play the CBO game than you do the asset game. That's, that's cool. Yeah. I got to dabble in it again. Cause I know that the, the day is coming when I will no longer be able to do ad set budget soon, soon. Anyway. Can you hear me? I, I feel yeah, like, I, I can hear you. It's kind of it's coming kind of coming in and going out. I don't know what it's like on your uh, end. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I no, for, on, on my end, it sounds great. The only person that's like having issues is Tyler. Me and you are good. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> awesome. Well, now, I kind of had a question for you, man. At what point? Because um, a lot of people come to us and just for advice all the time. Some people are like, "How do I start making money online?" I used to say, "Learn Facebook ads." Uh, now, I don't believe that to be the best choice for them because some people, different people are just good at different things. Some people might be amazing like at writing content, putting together product, whatever it is. And now I think you should focus on your natural ability. But with that said, man, when it comes to deciding whether to take on an agency or not, what do you think is like some of the key questions someone should ask themselves before they actually uh, decide to move forward with an agency? Um, I have a little bit of a different perspective than most people. I, I love it when people go and learn it themselves mm -hmm. and understand their, the, understand the platform, understand their own offer, understand their own conditions, understand, you know, enough to be dangerous, but, yeah. but also enough to appreciate the value of what handing it off would look like, which is why you know, we don't take clients on that spend less than a thousand dollars a day because we want those clients that have already proven their product, their concept, their offer. They've got some basic data and they're coming to us and saying, my, my knowledge limit ends here. And, mm -hmm. and I really want to focus on the other parts of my business to help it grow. And I can't do that when I'm buried in the ad manager all day. Mm -hmm. And so they're, they're at that point where they're excited to give it away, to go to the next level, not pet petrified to make a decision. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and those people that are spending like a hundred bucks a day, they're, they're still so undercapitalized and so um, unproven in what they're doing that they have a lot of fear around handing it to somebody else. Yeah. Right. So, you know, from, from the perspective of what would I learn first, um, my, my belief system has never changed. I believe if you learn lead generation like you, yeah, it's the most valuable skill on earth because you can apply that skill to anything. You can walk into any business on earth and be like, Hey, want more leads and sales? And they're like, yeah, yeah. please. You know, you, you, you try to walk into a business and say, Hey, would you like some insurance? Yeah. Or would you like that? Would you like a payment processor or whatever? Like, get out of here. They, they don't even they don't want to talk to you. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. when you walk in and say, hey, do you want more leads and sales? You're like, you're like a freaking magician. You're an alchemist. Yeah. yeah. Right? So I still believe that lead generation, if you want to be in the digital world, is not only the most valuable skill, but it's also a skill that you should have a really good understanding of it with your own brand before you hand it off. Because then you can look and see what somebody's doing. I had this conversation yesterday where this guy's like, hey man, I handed this off to this agency and I can see that only 40 and over are buying and they're still running traffic to 40 and under. And I can see that, you know, there's no sales happening in, in this placement and why haven't they changed? There's no retargeting. Like that guy can now make an educated decision on whether or not he's getting served the way that he wants. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So that's why I love, I love when people have at least a basic understanding of mm -hmm. what they're doing, you know, before they go looking for an agency. Cause nobody, nobody's going to care about it more than you. It's yeah. your business. Yeah. Like even, even if you come to me, I'm pretty, 
I'm pretty proud of the service that we provide to our clients, which is why we have them on average for a year or longer. Mm -hmm. But I still don't care about your business as much as you do. I'd be a bold liar if I told you that. I don't. It's mm -hmm. not my money. It's it's not my future. Yeah. Right. So yeah. If you if you like you know really own it, and then you and you know what has to be happening, and you hand it off to somebody who has more knowledge and more skill, then at least you know if you're getting the value for your money. Oh. Yeah. Smart. Definitely smart. Man, That's how many bad. clients? How many clients do you have now, roughly? Do we count? Um, at any given time, we usually have about twenty-five. Okay, cool. How big's well, your yeah, team? Yeah. Uh, about the same size, actually, twenty-five. Oh, crazy! That makes sense. Yeah, yeah, and you know, we we're not, you know, we're not the cheapest. We're not the most expensive. I mean, there's there's definitely agencies in New York and LA and stuff that would laugh at what we charge. Yeah, you know, our clients. And, and there's people who come along to me and say, well, you know, I can get this done for a thousand bucks a month from XYZ person. And that XYZ person just bought somebody's course <laughs> on how to be an agency and read it yesterday. And they're like, yeah, I can do this. Right. Like yeah. there's a pretty, pretty wide range of, yeah. of, of the definition of agency out there. What, um, so if you were to go out there and hire an agency, say you're on the, the opposite side, the consumer well, I guess like the business owner side, you were to hire an agency. How would you go about vetting that agency? Um, you know, I, I really believe that that talking to them first is big. Like I really want to pick the brain of the person that's going to be actively involved in, in my account because you can pretty quickly find out just through a basic conversation, what level of experience they have or what level of knowledge. Mm -hmm, like yeah. I, I would certainly want to know you know, what they've worked on in the past, you know, what were those results? You know, like you can tell pretty quickly if somebody has been around the block, like when they meet me and they're like, Oh, you've been doing this for 15 years and you've built and exited, you know, multiple companies and you know, they know that I know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Right. So I, I think that that interviewing them about their history and their experience, um, getting testimonials from them, you know, those are all like s super key indicators right off the bat. And, and I think that the, the second thing is um, understanding the difference between a media buyer and an agency. Mm -hmm. You know, a media buyer goes and buys media. An mm -hmm. agency should be looking at the business holistically, right? They should be looking at, you know, what are the costs per acquisition on the front? What are the KPIs in the middle? What does the back end look like? What is the creative? What is the messaging? What is the merchant processor? Are we, are we on PayPal still? Are we gonna get our funds locked up for six months? Yeah. Like the, the agency is looking at the, the, the whole business from front to back, from first number to last number, conversion rate optimization on the funnel. They, they take you on as if it's their business, yeah. right? Versus, mm -hmm. you know, some agencies out there, they're just media buyers. They're just gonna go in and, launch yeah. ads and hope for the best and they don't really care what happens yeah. Yeah. in the rest of the business right that's a great comparison i've never i've never heard that before but that makes a lot of sense what um if you were can you hear us okay aaron yeah yeah okay perfect um if you were to like so say you're spending five grand a day now you want to scale to 20 grand a day you want to bring on an agency so you can focus on the other parts of the business like you were talking about would you talk to like, so say I came to you and I was spending five grand a day. Would I want ideally, like if you were in my shoes, would I want to be making sure I'm going to be teamed up with someone who's used to spending 10 grand a day or how would you go about vetting that? Yeah, I, I think that's a great question. And a lot of the times when I'm interviewing different clients, you know, they'll ask me who's going to be involved on it. And, and I will tell them, you know, you've got, this person as the media buyer, they have this experience. You have this person as the chief strategist who works above the media buyer, they have this experience. We have um, a project manager above you. Then we've got our, you know, our creative team, our video, our copy, our so on and so forth. I think it's a great question. And when we have clients come in, we don't like round robin them. Like you get one, you get one, you get one like Oprah, you know? Yeah. 
we we look at that specific industry and we're like, oh, it's a real estate thing. Okay, it goes to our real estate guy who's got 10 years of experience. Oh, it's a coaching thing. It goes to coaching. Oh, it goes to e-commerce. We're going into the, they're almost like divisions inside of it based on experience, right? Mm -hmm. So I think it's a great question to be like, tell me what experience you've had with my offer before. You know, for me, info products I've sold about 600 million right so that's like that's like my jam like if we're going to talk about info products I'm right in there right but you know brand building and e-commerce that's that's my other strategist because he's running you know 12 different clients at 5k a day or more you know the e-com space that's I know enough to be dangerous but that's really him that's that handles that kind of stuff so I think it's a great question to be asking like Who's going to work on it? What's your experience? Ideally, who you've worked with, but sometimes that can be challenging because there's NDAs and stuff like that. Yeah. Do you specifically hire uh, within your company for people that are um, pros in like certain niches or is it just kind of how it works out? You know, so far it's kind of just been how it's worked out because, yeah. you know, we have a couple of, of um, training sources online that, that teach people how to buy media friends that that we have that own them you know and we'll go into their communities and say like who's the like the the best one you've got right now that's come through or whatever that's got some experience you know and 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 we'll get them vetted through the community owner and then we'll bring them through an interview process and then we'll bring them through a junior marketing process before they can handle their own and then we'll start to hand them over stuff and and really stay on top Mm -hmm. of them and and they've really just already come from places where they've excelled and we've said, okay, great. Like, Oh, perfect. You generated all the leads for all of the fitness studios for that company for the last you know, two years. And they had 90 fitness studio clients. Mm-hmm. You're our, you're our new fitness guru guy, Smart. right? Like yeah. we, we got, yeah. we got that, you know, pillar, you yeah. know? Um, do you, so you mentioned that you have some, that you get them through like people's courses and programs and stuff. Do you have any courses and programs you recommend? Yeah, I mean, definitely, you know, my partner Jason's course, um, the Academy of Advertising yeah. is, he's on a, just a different level of, you know, freak show, Facebook um, education. Yeah. And, and he's launched the first, what he calls the first ever, ever directional thinking course, where it's pre-launch, launch, post-launch, and then it's a playbook that he wrote like a football playbook. Like I've if your CPMs it, yeah. go up, do this. If your, if your cost per link click goes up, this is the problem, do this. If your ROAS drops, do this. Like he wrote like an actual yeah. like a football playbook, which is that's insane because that's, that's like in his mind, you know, and yeah. be able to put that like down is, is crazy. Um, we, we like ad skills. Um, Justin Brooks stuff um, is good. Um, you know, those you know, I'm blue. I'm part of blue ribbon, which is, um, Ezra Firestone's mastermind group, yeah. Ezra Firestone and, and Molly Pittman and that group, yeah. uh, over there from an e-commerce standpoint, phenomenal. Yeah. Um, so anything that they put out is super, super high quality. I would say those three are probably the, mm-hmm. the only, the only ones that I would outwardly recommend right now. Nice. Okay. Cool. Thank you for that. Cool. Yeah. appreciate that for sure. Am I frozen? No, you're good. Perfect. You're on the uh, team. <laughs> awesome. Uh, another thing I wanted to ask you, as far as like uh, running an agency, like I know when you and I talked, it has kinds of its ups and downs, but like based on what you know now and you've seen all these different verticals, these different businesses, if you were to get out of the agency and run a business, what vertical do you think you'd get into yourself based on what you've seen? Oh. You know, it's really tough to say, like, I, I really like my free time. Like I'm about, uh, I'm about spending time with my family and, and yeah. following my passions. I, I think the easiest business to start is a coaching business because, you know, people want the shortcut and you can charge a premium price for it. So like, if I just wanted to make money, you know, starting a coaching business is super easy. Mm-hmm. Um, as far as being able to turn it on and leave it. I mean, there's nothing like the cost per lead world. 
you know, find a client, they want leads, how much do you want to pay for them, you know, build the campaign, uh, duplicate it out 10 times in the same vertical to the set, you know, the same 10, 10 roofers or whatever. Yeah. And you can literally, you can set it and forget it and make, you know, great money just on a cost per lead basis. You know, if you, if you want to talk about the real business, you know, Ezra Firestone always says that, that boom by Cindy Joseph is his easiest business, mm -hmm. which is, a, you know, I think they're going to do something close to $50 million this year in revenue or something wow. just absurd. And he's like, you know what, man, more goop, more jars, more goop, more jars. He's like yeah. it's the easiest business on earth. You know, you, you build a SaaS product, constant tech changes and integrations and features yeah. and benefits. You know, you build a coaching business, you cap out because you've, I got so many hours in a day, you know, you build a cost per lead business, you know, people don't pay their bills or they whine about lead quality. Like they all have downsides. You know, the, I guess the only downside to e-commerce is you got it. When you get to scale, you got to have cash because you yeah. got to have so much inventory running through the system, you know, at, and be able to hold in, in, in lean times. That's the only real challenge is the cash flow part to an e-commerce business. But running an e-commerce business is is stupidly simple he's right you know you make ads you sell stuff you send emails you put goop into jars they get yeah. shipped like it's easy that's that's interesting because i feel like he's spent so many years dialing in that business um and i because i used to watch like a lot of his stuff and a lot of his like stuff on email funnels facebook advertising like everything and i and like on the surface it does sound easy but there's a lot of moving parts to that mm -hmm. I don't know. Maybe it's, maybe it just seems more complex in my head than it really is. If you were to build a business that you would actually sell, would it be the e-com one? Absolutely. Makes sense. No, no questions asked. I mean, if, if you want to look at multiples, you know, SaaS is the way to go because once you build a SaaS and it's just on subscription, you know, you're going to get insane multiples on a SaaS. Um, a software as a service, but you know, as far as like a simple business to run that is very easy to sell, e-commerce is you know is yeah. it's right up there. Nice. And as far as an e-commerce, I imagine like based on what you say, more goop, more jars, some sort of business where there's a consumable. He's looking very stoic right now. <laughs> I wonder if there, there just seems to be like a massive delay. Yeah. Can you hear us, Aaron? Yeah, I, it's it kind of it's kind of coming in and out a little bit. Oh, so, interesting. <laughs> Sorry about that. That's no okay. Worries. I wonder who it is. That doesn't. I guess it doesn't matter. I don't yeah. know. Like I could go. I could go and and reboot the router and see if it's me. But that would oh, officially turn yeah. me this. Yeah. I mean, we're 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 almost close to wrap up time anyway, man. So don't worry about it. The info's been great in this anyway. So. Awesome. Well, yeah. I probably should wrap it up. I've got a, a client call here in about 10 minutes. So okay. is there any last parting thoughts or questions before we wrap it up? I think Tyler, uh, no. Tyler, you no. want to get that question asked? Sure. Uh, actually, I got two. First one, um, it sounded like as far as the e-commerce business you'd go after, it'd be where there's some sort of a consumable. Yeah. I mean, I love the consumable model, you know, first and foremost, because if you go and build anything, unless you've got a patent on it, there's somebody building it cheaper and faster than you, you know, within three months, as soon as they see you onslaught the landscape with ads, yeah. they're, they're trying to kind of knock you off with a cheaper version inside yeah. of Amazon or AliExpress or whatever. So, you know, a consumable, you can build a mode around on your unique selling proposition or your story or your culture or your whatever. Mm -hmm. And, and the reality is, as you know, like when I look at Ezra's brand, you know, the first year his return customer rate was like 12% and last year it was 60%. Wow. Right. When you've got 60% wow. return customers that, you know, that halo that you're creating around your business, yeah. you know, is insane, you know? Yep. And if I, if I could go back and I could do it all again, I would have built a brand that was mine from day one because I mean, he could very easily exit that for three, 400 million at this point. Wow. Yeah. That's bad. That's out. crazy. Um, but no, hit it. 
Second question. Uh, if someone wants to, if they think, you know, it's time that they focus on other parts of their business and uh, they're looking to hand off to an agency, um, as far as like the, the minimum you want to look for, what would that look like? And are you open to taking more clients on right now? Yeah, we're always open to taking more clients. I, I vet the clients in two ways. One, do I think I can help you? You know, is it an offer that I think is quality and it can scale? And two, do I like you? Because I'm, <laughs> I'm getting too old to, to work with people I don't like that yeah. are, you know, dramatic yeah. or, you know, crazy or, or whatever. So yeah. I, I, I meet with everybody personally first. I audit everything they're doing. I audit their strategy. I audit their results. I ask them where they want to be. And if I think I can help, I, I absolutely will. You know, what is the, the ideal client for us? Ideal client for us is somebody who's, you know, either spending $1,000 a day or more on ads or somebody that's got an amazing idea that's literally starting from scratch and they want us to build the entire infrastructure for them. Mm. And they're, they're capitalized enough to be able mm -hmm. to, you know, take 60 days to build it and then test it and then, you know, yeah. hitting traction in five or six months you know those are those are pretty much the two clients we take on at this point that's amazing what's the uh what's the best way to get a hold of you if, if one of the if some of our listeners meet that criteria um i mean i'm i'm, I'm you can find me anywhere you can go to aaronparkinson.com you can you can message me on facebook you can go to seven mile media's website um and, and schedule a, a you, yeah, Seven Mile Media. Yeah, you can you can schedule an appointment with me on there. You know, shit, I'll give my cell phone. It's three four five nine three six five zero zero one. I don't care. That's that's very <laughs> that's very bold of you. <laughs> very bold. All right, Gary man. V, Gary V does it. it. Can't be that bad. That's, that's true. true. <laughs> well, man, thanks for being on. Like that, this was awesome. This is really cool. You dropped some good Facebook knowledge in there. Also, this is very will be very helpful to a lot of people, including myself. Yeah, uh, appreciate that time. I always try to do it, man. Well, thanks for having me on, guys. I, I, I congratulations on all your success, and I can't wait to to see it come out. Thanks, man. Uh, thank you, everyone, for listening today. For everyone watching, please do not forget to subscribe to our YouTube. And for everyone listening, please give us a five star review on iTunes, Spotify, or Stitcher. We will see you on the next one, guys. Later. Thanks, guys. <laughs> <laughs>